Hello everyone, I am the Lore Explorer, and this is The Outer Wilds. Today, we are going to talk about the destroying space-time ending. I see this one confuses a lot of people, and I can understand that. It's never really explained in-game, so really, this is only a theory about a really confusing topic. Now, until recently, there was only one way to get this ending, so we will start there. Heading to the High Energy Lab, we can power up a black-white hole pair. If we shoot our scout into the black hole, we see it exit the white hole before it ever entered the black hole to begin with. If we remove one of the cores while both scouts are present, we get a special ending. The scout that came out of the white hole is at the center of some space-time tear. And the tear we see can't just be patched up with a nice band-aid. We destroy space-time and the end credits roll. But what the hell happened? Well, the universe has a few inherent roles, such as cause and effect. If the scout never goes into the black hole, it's impossible for it to exit the white hole, yet it already has. The effect of all of this, without a cause, is the source of the space-time fabric being destroyed. Now here's the thing, if it was just simple cause and effect, space-time should break as soon as it exits the white hole. But, we know quantum possibilities and time jumps are a thing in the outer wild. As long as it's possible for the cause to eventually happen, space-time won't break. So let's break this down. We shoot the scout at the black hole. It exits the white hole. It then enters the black hole. And everything is fine. But if we shoot the scout at the black hole, it exits the white hole. And we get rid of the black hole before it enters it? Both scouts stay in the reality. The new scout is the center of space-time destruction. There is only ever a problem when it's impossible for the scout to enter the black hole. It's not possible for it to have exited the white hole if it never entered to begin with, and we already know the result when that happens. So to sum it up, effect can happen before cause, as long as it's possible for the cause to happen eventually. This is better shown at the newly added second way to get the destroying space-time ending, the Ash Twin Projects. If we head there, we can see a black hole just like a setup that we've seen at the HEL, except this one is powered enough to send things back 22 minutes. So if we follow the logic, we should jump in and show up 22 minutes before we ever entered the black hole. Hmm, let's see. Y yeah, it does seem like we w went back 22 minutes, but we woke up at the campfire like we normally do. But if we check our map, we see that there is a copy of us still at the Ash Twin Projects. Just like with the Scout, we created a copy. But this one lasts more than a second, so this time we have enough time to go and experiment with it. Not only that, we can actually go talk to the copy of ourselves. Who better to consult about this than us? We consult us all the time, and this time we can't be called crazy for it. Talking to self, we can ask what memories they have. It turns out they have all the memories we do, except for the ones that we made since we woke up at the campfire. Self thinks this makes sense, since jumping through the black hole is definitely what created two of us. Then they ask, what if we don't jump in again at the end of the loop? As if to confirm my high energy lab theory, we respond by saying, if I don't, then where did you come from? In other words, if we never jump into the black hole at the end of the loop, nothing caused itself to ever exit the white hole to begin with. We can watch the result of this play out before us. Again, self is a source of the destruction of space-time. This only happens when the black hole closes and it becomes impossible for us to enter it. But let's do some quick experiments to be sure. If we enter the black hole when self is around, everything is fine. The cause happens and the loop goes on with cause at the ATP, just like previously. But what happens if we unplug the core? That's what caused the HEL to malfunction. Well, just taking it out, nothing happens. The reason for this is because we can just plug it right back in, right? I mean, it, it's not impossible for the initial cause to happen. In a game all about quantum possibilities and time skips, it makes sense it's not as simple as cause and effect, but that is still what it breaks down to. In a podcast, the lead dev said they added this ending to close off a loophole. If the same thing doesn't have to enter the black hole to cause the object to exit the white hole, 
then the Nomai could have exploited this to create endless energy. Coal was a bad example, but all they would have to do is send in one piece of coal, and then take the copy, and send that in a black hole again. Now you have two of them. If you continue to do that, you would create an endless source of energy. But if the coal has to go through the black hole again, you couldn't just burn it, say, and then not send it through and everything would be fine. You'd have to send another piece of coal through, so there would be an equal energy exchange. You couldn't exploit it this way. And it doesn't stop with energy, really, they could have just made an endless army of Nomai that could have done science till the end of the days. Now a viewer of mine asked me a really good question in my eyes. So let's say Church somehow stumbled his way into the ATP and somehow fell into the black hole. A copy of them would show up in the ATP 22 minutes prior, and the original Church would wake up on Ember Twin since the ATP sends the whole timeline back. But the Church on Ember Twin would have no memories of this, since they aren't connected to a statue. The one inside the Ash Twin projects would remember what happened, but I'm not sure they could do anything about it. First, they couldn't get out of the ATP if nothing charged the white hole. And since the copy is the effect of the first chart jumping through, if they themselves jump through, they would effectively, well, cause themselves, which again is just impossible. But ultimately, this is a confusing topic, especially since the ATP isn't easy to understand in and of itself. But that's the conclusion I've come to after thinking on it for a while. It boils down to cause and effect, but with time and possibilities involved. I really like the way one viewer put it to me when we were talking about it. Jumping into the black hole is like making a promise with the universe. One saying, we will jump into the black hole again to cause this effect. If that's impossible or doesn't happen, space time pays the price. Sorry this episode got a bit wordy, but I had to be super clear with the steps here. Now this last bit is just a guess, but wouldn't something have to govern these laws? Something would need to end space-time if something goes wrong, right? And I think this is probably the I if such a thing happens. Since we know it can affect time, and we know it also stores all quantum possibilities, so it will sort of make sense if it can tell that something impossible happened. But really, there is no proof to that, or the cause and effect theory, other than the observations I've made. But for now, this is Lore Explorer diving deep into the story in a Nomai shuttle, so you don't have to.